Daniel Rivers painting again? 53. 53. And O'Hara's painting's uh, poem is 57. And then I just want to say briefly before I have to quit, uh, about I want to tell you a little bit about this play that's in your packet by Kenneth Koch. Koch is a friend of Larry Rivers and Frank O'Hara. Larry Rivers asked Kenneth Koch to write a play for his kids' elementary school. Koch was interested in Rivers' painting and O'Hara's poem, so he wrote a play about Washington crossing the Delaware. It was never performed in the elementary school due to, I think, the ceiling collapsed on the first night or something like that, uh, those physical plant problems that we can all identify with. But it did get picked up off-Broadway, and it became a sensation in the New York art scene. But what you've got here is a play written to be performed by children that takes on the story of the myth of Washington crossing the Delaware. What Koch does is much more interesting because he gets you thinking about, rather than knocking him off the pedestal, he gets you thinking about the pedestal. Why is he on a pedestal? How did he get there? What do we know about the crossing? One of the things that he does is he, he crosses in the play two different Washington myths, the cherry tree myth and the cross of the Delaware. <laughs> he says that uh, he has Washington it, it appears as a child in a, and he, and he, in his dream. So Washington goes to bed at night in the first scene. And he, 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 he lies down after standing, sitting on the bed uh, portentously and saying, good night, America. And then he goes to sleep. <laughs> and then he has this dream and this little kid, George Washington, comes out. And his dad gives him a cherry tree and he hates the cherry tree. He, uh, he says it's ugly, he didn't want it. And uh, to begin with, his dad gets mad at him, his dad chases him, and no, he, the kid, he ultimately plants it and then chops it down. And he says, uh, his dad asks him, did you chop down the cherry tree? And little George says, I cannot tell a lie, but I can run. So he takes <laughs> off. <laughs> he takes off and his dad chases after him. And he sees little George crossing the river. And his dad says, that's the only way he could have got him when he crossed the river. <laughs> so Washington wakes up from the dream and he says, we're crossing the Delaware! And he leads his men on this, on this uh, trip into, into history for the capital H. Uh, so, uh, one of the things that I'm suggesting, I think literature, because of its inherent connectivity, can bring together history and art in wonderful ways. Uh, it gives you, what was it, the hands-on, mind-on uh, aspect. I think you could do these kinds of things with literature. Uh, it, it, is, it always has these many things going on in it. Uh, rivers to have this peculiar capability. You can do a lot of things with rivers. I was talking with Susan before. You could do a unit on crossing rivers. You could look at that painting, you could read Coke, you could go to your own little creek and, and in, reenact uh, your, your version of Washington crossing uh, the Mud River or what have you. Um, but rivers and literature both have a lot of life and a lot of meaning to give us. So I would encourage you to, to pursue those things. Yeah? Uh, when was the play written? 62, I think, uh, published in 66, written in first stage in 62. Okay. Good. And all the fourth graders never got to do it? Not that I know of. <laughs> K-O-C-H. Yeah. K-O-C-H. Kenneth Coke. Also a poet. Yeah. Did you get to do some river trips before you wrote this book? I did. In fact, uh, that, again, that's one of the things that I really value about this whole project gotten me out of the library. <laughs> and I've tried to I've tried to connect what I've been reading about to as much first hand experience as possible because I think that helps bring things alive for readers. Yeah. Just, just in, in addition to that, when I saw the painting uh, when it was uh, and I was listening to um, uh, David McCullough's book 1776, so I put that on you know your iPod or and listen and so those of you who are not familiar with the background, that's what I would encourage you to do is, you know, buy the digital book, put the, you know, put the headset in, and have him describe that event. Now, I'm real interested in the digital history part of thinking, marry this with the historical account or theatrical account, would be really yeah. interesting. And then play that back with the other image that you have and ask yourself which one you know, captures that moment. I think you're right. What he is describing, the historical research that only David McCullough had done on that, certainly I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And you realize that that one, to me, was the, you know, the real, you know, realistic one. So anyway, I think that marriage of literature and historical, you know, and, and certainly a play would give you a really interesting perspective on that. Uh, that's a, the curator, the curator of the, uh, 
Metropolitan Museum of New York says that many people take this as a historical document. Oh, they think it's really yeah. yeah. as, 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 well. as the fact. Oh, they think it's authentic. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's yeah. really interesting. It sells it. It's manipulative. It is. It's manipulative. It's manipulative. It's manipulative. Uh, the idea that you stand up in a, in a, in a rowboat is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the question. That's the question. Not only that, but remember he's got the nice legs, right? Yeah. So what he's got is good leg up. And that's George Washington. He can do anything. That's right. George Washington. Why? I don't want to know. Don't say anything bad about George. Uh, do you do you, did you have more? Uh, well, I was just I wanted to talk a little bit about teaching itself as crossing, but I mean I'm happy to. Uh, I have one I have one concept that I might throw out for people. Um, I've done a lot of uh, of work that's kind of similar to this concept, except uh, I deal with the liminal state, which is the state between two states. Um, literally, it's the it's the you know, threshold of the door. It's when you're neither one thing or the other, which strikes me as all pretty much all four years of high school. Um, but you know, you look at you look at this, and it captures that liminal state. So thinking about the idea of liminality, uh, you can there might be ways that you can get your students to connect with some of these works of art by thinking about how you know how the places captured or the ideas captured are are between two states, between that crossing. Yeah, and that, that's actually how I, how I wanted to conclude, because I think that teaching itself can be a kind of crossing. And, and it was really th th hearing you talk about these things and thinking more about it myself that I, that I wanted to take this a little bit further. It's like, you know, we're bringing students to new lands, and there's a liminal space through which we move to get them to these new lands, these new lands of thinking and learning, imagination. Uh, but also, I think you take them to Washington's crossing Delaware, and then you cross back to the present and say, here we are now, how does this work? So that's why I was thinking of taking kids down to the creek and thinking about crossing from that angle is an example of that kind of crossing. I think teaching is also crossing our minds and is in hybridizing, uh, crossing our minds with our students. Think about what's going on with us in our lives, in our minds, and in their minds, and think how those together make something. What is it that that makes? What are the different angles I can take on that particular kind of making? I thought about teaching as uh, crossing the river with students into the future. I thought about that, especially this last graduation from college, and the students that I worked with for four years, and here they go. And I've, it's like this is like Sharon pulling his ferry across the sticks, and now. You know, there they go. They're they're not, they're not into the underworld, they're but they're they're not dead yet. <laughs> they're, they're but they're dead. We are dead no you. longer in the same. We're well, no longer in the same yeah. present. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I, I think in some ways preparing for that particular kind of or thinking about that particular kind of crossing at least can be useful to me. Um, if you wanted to work with something like this, uh, starting with. Uh, Loitza, getting students to see what they see in that painting, going to history, providing some of the context, thinking more about that for a richer interpretation, um, having students contribute the research on that particular context, what do they find out about the crossing and going to the, the resources that you have. You know, maybe turn to Larry Rivers' painting, it's pretty easy to get a hold of them. They are quite different when you put them uh, side by side in a classroom. Uh, O'Hara's poem is hard. It kind of helps people think a little bit about Rivers' painting, and it also introduces the idea of ekphrasis, but I don't think it's as useful ultimately as Kenneth Koch's play would be for uh, students to get their, to get the feeling about this event and the, the Washington that they know. Um, Coke helps me think about myth and history in America and crossing our own rivers, those that we imagine and those that we typically encounter. So the, the whole thing, this, the, the title, Picture, Poem, and Play, Bringing Art, Literature, History Together, uh, emphasizing the kind of playfulness of meaning. Coke is very playful. Uh, it, it, literature is a lot more, again, a lot more fun than people give it credit for being. And, and I, anything that you can do to not deaden literature is good, I think. And rivers are a great term for not deadening literature and other stuff.